Hey everybody. So I'm not feeling especially well today, so you'll have to bear with me. But I wanted to get this video out um, because I know there's a lot of you interested. So how I started my lab is I started in a spare bedroom of the house. I started by importing mostly and acclimating. And then I started using a still air box to actually do the in vitro work. I find that acclimating imports is significantly easier than actually disinfecting and creating your own explants, especially with certain plants that can be really tricky. Now I love the disinfection part and I love doing that, but it's just more challenging. So it can take a little while to work up to getting a nice portfolio of different plants doing from disinfection all by yourself. So I recommend importing, doing a mild disinfection and being able to multiply your plants in vitro from there. Um, other than that, you're gonna do a lot of marketing. Um, you're gonna do a lot of the stuff that I don't like. I spend a lot of time cleaning. The lab needs to be clean. And I spend a lot of time marketing. I'm not great at taking pictures, which is why you don't see a ton of pictures on my social medias and whatnot. Um, when I get a good picture, I like to post it and share it with everybody. That helps to keep the interest in the lab and make sure that people are aware of who I am. I've reached out to a bunch of colleges, locally tech schools, local gardening clubs, and I've had a lot of success speaking at those places. Um, you can charge a fee for that as well. Um, once you get better at tissue culturing and have the ability to speak and share your knowledge with other, with other people, and that's a nice revenue source, especially during the winter. I like to do a lot of those during the winter because one thing you need to be aware of, especially here where there are distinct seasons, we have a very deep winter and people aren't thinking about plants when there's feet of snow outside or even when the temperatures below 30 degrees. Their houses are often very packed with plants already and they're thinking about spring when they can move everything outdoors. And that's usually when you'll see the ramp up spring, summer, um, into fall, um, whatever your warmer temperatures may be. Um, that was going to be when people really think about plants. And so you'll see plant sales really explode during that time. During the winter, I was struggling for a little while, and that's why I actually diversified my particular lab to work with mycelium as well. The in vitro techniques are very similar. So you still have to work under sterile conditions. Um, for some of the formulations, I still use agar, so I get to use that. The little Dixie cups I got for my carnivores actually worked just great for also working in mycelium, so that worked out really well. You can also use a lot of the same materials. My scalpels, those are all the same. You do have to be particularly careful in sterilization, especially when switching from plants to mycelium or the other way around. You can't just do that with mild sterilization. I usually scrub down the whole tent, just like a good spray, my UV light, and make sure that it has a full cycle before I switch between the two, just to make sure any bacteria from one bacteria, fungus, anything from one doesn't transfer to the other because I'm trying to keep them separate. Another thing when you're doing mycelium is you also grow them in a separate place because you're intentionally growing fungus, which you don't want on your plants. So you have to have, I mean, I worked out of a closet for the mushrooms because they don't really like light. And then I have a separate tent for them when they need to fruit and need light. And it's not in the same location where my plants are. Other considerations. I mean, marketing is probably your best friend. It's something I'm terrible at, and I've had a lot of success just putting a sign out front of my door that says tissue culture. People come into me all the time and they'll ask me to tissue culture random things. Now, one of the things that goes really far with my customers and getting my name out there is I always tell people I will tissue culture anything as long as it's legal. So I've had people um, come to me about geraniums or hemp. Now, I didn't work with the hemp because there's entirely too much licensing confusion in the United States. If you're located somewhere where there isn't, you could totally pursue that. Um, it's definitely a lucrative aspect of tissue culture, and a lot of cannabis companies are definitely doing that or interested in doing that. Um, other than that, the mycelium, I sell um, into restaurants, um, food prep places, places that are local because you don't want to have to ship fresh mushrooms. There's companies that do that, and they just don't arrive that great. So it's always better to do that. I'm starting to offer more um, options for local people on the mushroom side, including um, boxes that are already prepared, because that's the hardest part. The sterile technique to where you get them to where they're ready to fruit is the hardest part about mushrooms. And then people can usually fruit them on their own. I can't ship those boxes. A lot of people use plastic bags for that. 
I, I really don't like plastic bags, so I'm sticking with the local market when it comes to my mushrooms. I do ship syringes throughout the 50 states. Um, there is some legality issues with shipping mushrooms to certain states, and I'm not even talking about Actives or Cubensis or any of the, the ones that are still extremely regulated, and I believe they're still Schedule One under the DEA. I don't touch any of those. I'm just talking about the ones that people can eat or use for medicinal purposes. So in my portfolio, I have white enoki, pink oyster, blue oyster, king trumpet. Um, lion's mane is a big one. I definitely recommend lion's mane if you can. Cordyceps I've just started working with. Apparently a lot of health food benefits. We'll see how everybody likes those when I can actually get them to fruit. Mushrooms can be challenging um, in the fruiting stage. Every mushroom species fruits a different way and requires a different substrate. So these are things that you would have to research and figure out. The plants are very similar. My portfolio is all over the place because I've had people uh, approach me and ask me to do aquatics. So I set up an aquarium. And then I started with a tiny one. It wasn't big enough. So now we're growing a bigger one and I, and I do have some Anubis in there. Um, some boost, I'm going to butcher it because I'm new to aquatics especially. Some boost, people call it buck. I don't know, B-U-C-H, something. But that one's a popular aquatic as well. I always start with the green. They're easier to find and it gives you a chance to like grow them out, see how they grow and then cut them. And then you can kind of get an idea how the green version works. But some of the Anubis, I know there's ghost Anubis that is very popular and very expensive. Um, and other varieties of all of the plants. So I did start with tropicals, phylodendrons, um, monstera, alocasia, syngonium. Those are the the benchmarks of my lab. But we have so many other things going on because I'm trying to expand the portfolio and stick with tiny plants. I focus on tiny plants that sell into like small plant shops. So again, local plant shops, even plant shops in your general area, or you can even ship as long as you don't run into um, like customs issues. So for me in Pennsylvania here in the United States, I can ship to the continental 49, 48 states and I have no issues. Puerto Rico is also very easy. Hawaii and Alaska have a little bit weird rules you would have to pay attention to. They like in vitro plants coming in. There's a lot of issues with like pests and um, there's quite a few plants on there that would be considered invasive that people keep um, indoors as hand plants and love. Um, Let's see, what else about my business? Marketing is really the thing that I think people really need to work on, especially as scientists who have a tendency to sit here in the lab and hope that people will come in. It's something I am not the greatest at, so I am definitely working on that because people don't know that you're here. There's definitely a lot of interest in buying your plants at less expensive prices. You'll have to, excuse me, it's a little rough today. Um, less expensive prices because you're able to offer them by tissue culture, but, um, being able to have a huge portfolio for a nursery, a small plant shop to come in and walk in and be able to order five of five different plants and walk out with a bus bucket of 25 different plants, you know, 25 plants or 50 plants or 100 plants that are all a nice variety where their shop isn't just one plant. And that's where a shop like ours, a small tissue culture shop can succeed. I don't re recommend moving out of the apartment until, you know, like a smaller space until you're ready to like foot the bills for rent and then realize that it's easily going to ramp out supplies, equipment. Um, eventually you're going to need help. And that's kind of where I am right now because I'm at the point where we're making enough money for us to survive and do okay. But I do need to bring somebody in. So I'm trying to ramp up this spring and hope that we reach the volume both with the mushrooms and the plants that I can consistently give an employee a good job. So that's where I am. And I will do breaking down of each of these little parts and how to start in future videos. But because there is interest in this, I figured I'd just go ahead and give you a quick overview of how I got from point A to point B. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day.